video, we'll show a few practical craft ideas. Watch this video and learn how to use them in your DIY projects. We can use this idea to make a note holder for your desk or a wish note holder for a party. We'll need a big blank wooden frame. Paint the frame with white acrylic paint. When the paint is dry, pin up thumbtacks to the back side of the frame. Make a 4 inch interval between them. Press over the thumbtacks leaving about half above the surface. Pin up 5 pieces per side. Shift a bit to fix the thumbtacks on the opposite side. Take white and pink threads. Wind the white thread around the thumbtacks. Pull up the thread to the opposite side and then back to form a zigzag. Attach the thread by hammering the thumbtacks. Cut off the excess. Fasten the pink thread to the free thumbtacks. Thus, it will crisscross the white thread by a new zigzag. Hammer the thumbtacks. Here it is! Draw a baby soul on the light paper. Cut it out. Erase the pencil. Make six to seven silhouettes of the right and left soles. Use different paper. Take small decorative clothespins. Spread them over the ropes. Fasten the soles. You can leave any notes on this lovely holder. Today, we'll make a stylish decorative basket using a rope. We need jute and cotton cords of different sizes, a plastic waste basket, and a hot glue gun. Start with the bottom. Coil a small snail, adding a hot glue to the jute cord. Attach it to the center of the basket bottom. Use a glue gun. Press over. Cover a small bottom area with the hot glue and place a tight cord coil. Make the snail bigger by adding tight rope coils. Cut off the cord when the bottom decoration is complete. Glue the end. Add the cord of another size. Make walls in the same way. Keep in mind to attach the rope coils with the hot glue. You can add several layers of painted cotton rope. Cut the end of the jute cord. Secure with some tape. Join the ends of the ropes using the hot glue. Bright, juicy colors will add a bit of a spring mood. We've shown an easy method of painting a cord in one of our previous tutorials. Change for the jute rope again. Add a few coils of the cotton rope near the wall end. Take a thin jute cord to decorate the basket edge. Add a few layers inside the basket to make it look neat. Secure the cord end with a stopper. The stylish rope decorative basket will become a necessary accessory in your interior. You can use it as an ornamental flower pot or a fruit vase, or for keeping handmade materials. Today, we'll create a miniature garden in a pot to become a part of the interior design. We'll need a large terracotta pot with a tray, white acrylic paint, and a brush. Let's decorate the pot first. Start with the tray, paint across the edge with a brush. Try to make a spilled out paint effect. You can pour the paint into a wide bowl and dip the tray edges.
turn it over. Define the edge. We've got a beautiful combination of the terracotta and white. Now, take the pot and try another method. We'll need a small cup. Take some paint. Pour it onto the pot. As the paint is thick enough, finish decorating with a brush. Form a line around the bottom. Pour some more paint. Use the brush to distribute it over the surface. Add more paint from the cup. If you don't like the pattern, just wash it out under the running water using a sponge. We've got such an interesting pattern. Let it dry. Start with the mini garden. We'll need potting soil, gravel, shells, and succulents. In this pot, there are Echeveria and Cruslow, also known under such funny names as Lizard's Tail, Zipper Plant, and Princess Pine. There is a quite popular plant often named Florist or Christmas Calancho, and even strangely, Madagascar Widow's Thrill. There is another species of Echeveria. It is one more Cruslow, commonly known as Friendship Tree, Lucky Plant, or Money Tree. This plant is often called Cathedral Bells, Life Plant, Miracle Leaf, and Goethe Plant. The hole in the pot is quite large. To avoid the soil washing out, cover the hole with a shell. You can use clay dye or big pebbles. Pour in soil. By the way, the clay pot we're using is ideal for the succulents which don't bear the excess moisture. Due to the porous clay, there is oxygen exchange, so we can say that the pot is breathable. Loosen the soil with your hands to remove lumps. Place the succulents. Money tree comes first. Don't take the plant out of the small container. Firstly, it will protect the plant from the root conflict with other succulents. And secondly, it will grow slowly and stay the same size. Now set Echeveria and Cruslow. Pour in some more soil. Plant Christmas Calancho and Cathedral Bells. Add soil. This Echeveria was cut out of the seedling, but you can plant it here. It will take root quickly. Distribute the plants in the pot adding soil. Fill all the spaces between the plants to hold well. The most important thing about succulents is maximum light and limited watering. In winter, set them in the coolest place of the house and stop watering until spring. When it gets warm, place the plants in the sunlight to wake them up. Brush the soil off the leaves. There is a tip. If you water succulents rarely, they won't rot but just stay the same size. The mini garden will look neat if the dirt no longer shows through. We use small gravel for aquarium soil to cover the surface. You can buy it in a special shop. Add some sea pebbles and shells and small stones. You can also use moss, pieces of tree bark, glass pebbles, or white sand. Keep in mind that succulents don't bear too moist and insufficient air exchange soil. As stones, moss and bark keep them wet longer. You should water the plants more seldom. We hope this wonderful mini garden will become a perfect element of your interior design. Today, we'll craft a stylish handmade denim heart-shaped cushion. We'll need blue marine denim, sky blue poplin, the cushion pattern from the attachment, hollow fiber cushion filling, Taylor's chalk. Fold the denim on the bias, keeping the wrong side inward. Make a strip one inch by 20 inches. Cut out 12 of these strips. Trace a heart edging on the bias, keeping an inch allowance. Cut it out. Make a heart size square poplin lining. Place a denim strip upright across the center of the square. Place another strip shifting about half an inch to the side. Place seven strips in a row on the poplin square. Now put another strip crosswise onto the first one. 
under the second one, onto the third one, etc. The second level strip shifts about half an inch up from the first one. Put it under the first upright strip, on the second one, under the third one, and so on, checkerwise. Five strips will be enough. Place a semi-heart stencil onto the center of the strip pattern. Trace it with Taylor's chalk. Make another semi-heart pattern. Pin the strips to keep them in place. Sew them with the lining shifting about a quarter inch out of the line. Pull out unnecessary pins. Sew the heart around. Cut off the excess, keeping about half an inch of allowance. Make shallow cuts on the inner side of the denim heart edging. Now fold down half an inch across the inner side. Now sew a dotted bass stitch. Place the edging onto the heart. The seam on the heart shouldn't be seen. Now, neatly sew two details across the edge. Be careful to make an even stitch, keeping the same distance from the edge. Remove the unnecessary bass seam. One half of the cushion is ready. Make another half in the same way. Place the halves onto each other, right side inwards, Place together at the bottom center and the top one. Pin the two details together. Sew small stitches across the edge. Leave four to six inches loose. Pull the cushion right side up through the unstitched hole. Untuck seams and corners. If the fabric is bulging, Carefully make a small cut in the upper inner corner of the heart. Tightly stuff the cushion with a hollow fiber filling. Sew neatly with dark threads. The Love Heart Cushion is ready. You can use it as a design element to decorate your settee or as a gift for your close friends on St. Valentine's Day. In today's tutorial, we'll show you how to decorate a wooden picture frame in nail string art technique. We'll need some water, blank wooden frame, some cup for paint mixing, some paints, and threads. First, you want to paint the wooden frame. We've opted for deep blue. Squeeze some cobalt and blue. We only want to slightly mix the paints for a rustic finishing. We are using dry brush technique. It works best for textured surface of the wood. Also, we want deep opaque color. Leave the frame for around 40 minutes till the paint dries out completely. In today's string art tutorial, we'll use size 8 common nails with flat heads. Use a ruler and a graphite pencil to mark points along the outer edge of the frame. Space the dots 1 cm apart. Now mark the dot pattern along the inner edge of the frame. Here we have a handy small hammer. Hammer in the nails, starting with the inner edge outline. Leave about 6 mm nail shank protruding. You want the nail heads to form a straight line. The nail base for the string art is done and already looks pretty cool. The next stage will need threads of contrasting colors. Start with any of the bottom corners of the outer outline not the end of the thread. Start weaving in a zigzag manner, skipping 2-3 nails as you go. Wrap the thread around the nail shank as if tying a knot. The nail head prevents the thread from sliding off. Work the second layer in a contrasting color. When done, knot the thread. The thread is thin, so you might have difficulties tying a knot. A string art photo frame like this will make a perfect home decor or a fancy gift for someone special. Subscribe to our channel and check out more video tutorials. Leave your comments 